an emergency physician that I've been engaging on Facebook named um, Justin Fairless. Okay, this guy is plugged in. So, uh, in fact, I was talking um, with Corey to see could we get him um, on camera having a debate where we could see what, what if anything, we agree on um, and, and where we disagree. I feel that we're on two extremes. He thinks he's mainstream. But I said that I haven't met a restriction I like. I, I hate them all. And he hasn't met a restriction he doesn't like. He loves them all. <laughs> so I think that would be a very interesting cage match. He's got I've, I've offered to debate him point by point and, and answer questions from the field. And um, he said, oh, and I offered, I said, come here tonight, come here any day. And um, I said, come to Salon. He said, that would be uh, uh, in poor taste during this, these, you know, during this shutdown, um, you know, not having social distance. I mean, is this guy afraid of his own shadow? So he wears, uh, he wears the mask and the face shield and all that. If go on, uh, on his Facebook and look, and it says uh, something like anytime, anywhere, anything. Like, you know, he's an emergency doctor, so he's going to do anything. He won't come and debate me anywhere, anytime, anything. Yeah. Well, if you get it set up with him, give me a call and I'll drive out. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and again, uh, I'll do it anywhere. I don't care. Because the, the bottom line is, there are things that he cannot defend. Yeah. He cannot defend cloth mask. Yeah. And, and he falls back on, um, well, the CDC and WHO recommended. Yeah. And I said, look, President Trump said, hey, WHO, you guys were lying, you guys were misleading, you guys were doing bad things. Um, you know that $500 billion that we were supposed to give you? Yeah, we're not giving you that. That's how strongly President Trump was advised and, and that he himself said, that's what we think of the WHO. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Fairless is saying, gotta follow, if they're an authority figure, gotta follow them. By the way, by the way, I'm an authority figure, he's telling people, yeah. So he said, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, board of directors of the American College of Emergency yeah. Physicians, do not listen to Dr. Erickson. Watch out for you know these lies and misstatements. I got no dog in the fight. Yeah. I just love freedom, and I just yeah. think this is all stupid. Yeah. So yeah. justify, justify a person in their own car alone wearing a mask, any mask, even a useless one. Um, justify people wearing cloth masks. What is that for? Is that for the police? That's state? That. It's for freedom of speech for me. Just to justify. <laughs> okay. It shows gonna, my resistance. I'm going to do a surgical or, or medical procedure on a patient. One. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put on my sterile gloves and I'm going to set up a sterile tray. I'm going to set up a sterile field. And I'm going to have a second person bringing me supplies. Yeah. And I'm not going to go between other things and, and the tray. And they're not going to touch the tray. They're going to drop it on there sterilely. And then I'm going to only go between me and the patient. So how does that compare to a person who's in any of these shops putting gloves on at the start of their shift and wearing them all day? What is the difference, Dr. Fairless, in gloved hands and non-gloved hands in anyone who's not doing a medical procedure? Tell me what the difference is, and if you can't justify it, then say so. Be honest. For once, be honest. You're not being honest. You're not being honest to the people when you tell people they need to frequently hand wash in their own house. They will be. What are you? What are you? What are you preventing in your own house? Whatever it is, you're already exposed to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. So basically, you're saying Dr. Justin Fearless is lying to the public. I hate to use that word, although I think I just did on tape. Well, you but, did, but that's what I wanted to make sure that I was hearing you correctly. I mean, it's a strong word, but the thing is, is that he he is the person who's accusing other people of misleading. He is the person that's misleading. Okay. He's using the veil of authority, yeah. and I'm just deferring to the CDC and the WHO. CDC has some problems also. Yeah. They're giving some bad advice as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he and Bill Gates and some of the globalists, and you know, some of these people have problems. Yeah. Some of these pharmaceutical companies, so these people have some serious conflicts of interest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we really need to get, if we're not doing this for medical and scientific reasons, then why are we? And if, and if, if that's the case, Bill Barr, if you're listening, investigate this stuff. Now, I know you can't do it right now. you got an election for Trump to do. But gather the information now, and November 11th, or when, when's election day? Around November yes. 11th? That's the first November 12th. Thing. Yeah. Serve these people. Yeah. I mean, get do the investigation. Start it now. Get the names. Um, there are bad people in this country. Most of the people are good people, but there are some people that are bad. Yeah. The 14% are not bad people. 
they're just scared people. So if you're a C person, we invite you to you know, step out of, the, out of the darkness, try and come to B. But I know that's difficult for you. You're the people that say, you just gotta follow authority, follow the rules, it's only two more weeks, they know what they're doing, um, you're gonna kill my kids. Yeah. Um, my second cousin once removed had cancer once. So didn't you go up in the generations that question authority? Absolutely. Actually, actually, I believe it or not, I was at Woodstock. <laughs> really? I actually was. No, well, now, I didn't experience it because I was only like five years old. Yeah, yeah. But I was, uh, I was actually in my car as the um, the, the road was. Uh, my parents have a summer place about six miles, eight miles from there. Yeah. And uh, we go there all the time. They have concerts there now. Yeah. And uh, and so beautiful country. So what happened was um, is in Bethel, New York, and we're in a, we have a place near there. So we were driving up from New York City, um, from Brooklyn, and uh, they had the road was just. My brother, who's like two years older, has memories of it. I have no memories of it. Uh -huh. But he said he was like down on the floorboard because of all these hippies and crazy people who were walking with no shirts on on the street. And that was a couple miles away from, you know, it was like two miles from, a mile from the actual concert. Yeah. But they were camping everywhere. Yeah. And so, yeah, I actually, I actually technically was at Woodstock. I've been to the reunions periodically since then. But it was great to talk with you, great to meet you. I'd love to do it again with Justin Fairless. Yeah. Justin Fairless, where are you? Get out of here. Stop hiding. Yeah. Good yeah. talking me. We're all talking me, Joe. Your place. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Yeah, he's local. He's right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll drive to you. You can run, you can hide, but not forever. So anyway. Yeah, you got to stop spouting that nonsense.